Divorced men of Reddit. What moment with your former wife made me think yup. I'm asking this girl to divorce me? I was working on a mother-daughter scrapbook as a Christmas present for her. Was going through her Google Photos account looking for pics of them together. Came across a selfie she took with some dude laying on her. Confirmed her second affair. Knew it was over the moment I saw it. That has ducked me up pretty good. Besides the narcissism, random violence and violent outbursts, it was her strange punishments. Her last one doomed her. My crime? I forgot milk on the way home from work so she didn't talk to me. Not one word. For a week. Pure bliss. For a week. When she asked if I was ready to apologize I handed her the divorce papers. Why? Because you rob me of solitude but provide me with no companionship. When the cops showed up and arrested me while I was washing dishes. Found out after being taken to the station that she had claimed that I had been beating on her and my 5 year old son. Was acquitted in court a month or so later. The situation was so messed up that the cops actually testified on my behalf. We were already not speaking. It was Thanksgiving. I knew she wasn't going to bother. But I made a turkey and whatever goes with turkey for my then 8 year old daughter. I had the turkey out on the counter to rest after roasting. My beloved bride walked in. Calmly threw the turkey in the kitchen trash can. And walked out. I had to take my kid to ducking golden corral for thanksgiving. That was it. I was done. I was on deployment and she yelled at me for interrupting her family's celebration when I called on Christmas. When she presented a picture of our 4 year old daughter and me laying next to each other on the couch watching Blue's Clues to our marriage counselor as evidence of my inappropriate conduct around our kids. Thank god he saw right through that bullet immediately and told her to knock it off. Edit. There is no Joe. Not me Steve. Edit 2. Many asked. So here's the deal. We've been divorced almost 5 years now. The process wasn't fair. But that wasn't really my ex's fault. No allegations of child abuse or misconduct were brought up against me during the proceedings. So that was good. They wouldn't have flown for a minute in court anyway. Our kids are older now and every day are becoming better equipped to see and understand the difference between what's reasonable and right and what's simply just bat it insane. And it's not working out all that well for their mother. Who hasn't changed her MO much if at all since we parted ways. So it goes. I'm happily remarried now to a woman with kids of her own. Kids who were friends and schoolmates of my kids before she and I even got to know each other. They're all our kids now. Life is good. No more shenanigans. When we went on a family vacation and I hoped she'd sleep the entire time so I could have fun with our son. My neighbor's wife screaming putana. Downstairs after she caught my bride and her husband ducking in front of the fireplace. When she staged a robbery of our house so she could pawn all of my it for drug money. When a friend's wife said to me you know your wife is sleeping with my husband. 15 years in. And I find texts on her phone. Completely blindsided. No clue she had it in her to cheat. Told me it was just texting. Begged for forgiveness. I caved. A month later. Checked the phone bill to find that it never stopped. Confronted her again. Cue more begging and more denial on my part that she would let the life we had built go down in flames. This went on for a few months. So many promises. One night. I caught her on the phone when she thought I had left. Suddenly it's not just texts. Sometimes it was phone calls too. Just a friend she could talk to that she let things go too far with. Promised to break all contact. Swore it was never physical. Then I found emails. She detailed things that made me sick to read, but also included descriptions of his house. She broke finally, but swore it was all just in the line of duty. That's how she met, you see, visiting nurse service, and this guy was a client. Promised she was done. Love me, you see, no chance she was going to let 15 years go like that. I wasn't buying it anymore though. She announced she was going out one night with a work friend. Promised they were only going to the bar. Then she'd be home. Maybe late. But not too late. He had taken over her own phone account by then. But wasn't bright enough to understand that Google Latitude was still showing me where she was. And I wasn't about to show my hand. She kissed me goodbye and beelined right for his house. And was there until the wee hours of the morning. Once I knew where she had headed. 
I called her dad and my best friend to keep me from doing anything dumb. I will love them both forever for keeping me calm while my world went ducking insane all around me. My father-in-law offered to stay with the kids and wait for her to get home. Around 3am, while couch surfing my buddy's place, he sent me a nasty text asking where the duck I thought I was. I texted her a screenshot of her little GPS dot at her boyfriend's and let her know I'd be sending her some paperwork soon. Her. I can't live in this house anymore. It's not in a major city. Me. We're less than an hour away from one. Also. I inherited this house. It costs me nothing but upkeep. Also. I pay every bill. You work 6 hours a week and have one class. Where do you get off demanding anything? Her. Buy me a new house or we're done. Me. Get the duck out of my house. When she informed me she was cheating on me and leaving me for that guy. K. That guy was engaged. Not to her. Oddly enough he did not break off his engagement. Did. Wow. Thought this thread was dead when I commented. I'd like to add this was 6 months into our marriage. Together for 3 years. But that last 6 months she couldn't keep it together. When I came to the sad realization that we were just good roommates and had been like that for years. We have been divorced for almost 10 years and she is one of my favorite people in the world. We just weren't supposed to be married. Edit first gold. Thank you stranger. I can't wait to tell my ex that yet another good thing came of our split. I used to love to do chores for her because she loved being taken care of. When she stopped noticing, it started hurting. Then one day I made a bench for our entryway out of Barnwood. Took about 40 hours of work. She walked in the house after work that day and sat her purse on it and proceeded to start the fight where she told me that she was mad she got married to me. She stormed out of the house grabbing her purse. Never noticed the bench was there. I knew then but I think she already knew. Preface. We were doing a trial separation. She moved into the spare bedroom of our apartment. Divorce had been thrown around but we still spent time together and slept together. I wasn't seriously considering divorce. But rather counseling. Etc. Up until the day I came home from work at the same time I came home every day and she was in her room being ducked by some random guy she met on Tinder. He had not told him she was married. I kicked him out of the apartment and made it clear to her I would be moving out as soon as possible. Edit. Must add that she expressed interest in counseling as well. And that we discussed ground rules for the separation. One of which was do not duck other people. Edit 2. Thanks for all the love. For those asking. I moved out because I couldn't afford the apartment on my own. I didn't kick the guy's ass but I did tell him while punching the door that he had 3 minutes to get out of my apartment. I said if he wasn't out in 3 minutes I was going to break down the door. And it wouldn't be to shake hands. Proud of that line from Enrage Me. Usually I'm not very articulate when angry. He was out in a little over 2 minutes. When she physically attacked me in front of our then 11 yo son. I'd been pondering the idea for a while. That was the clincher. Full stop. I found out she cheated on me. And upon me confronting her to discuss it. She manipulated me into thinking she was suicidal. Then she admitted the manipulation. Done. She may have once been a nice person. That's all gone now. Edit. Forgot to mention I found out because she had left her FB open with a conversation about her pregnancy scares to a friend. We hadn't had six in her a bit more than a month. Finding her. On Christmas Eve Eve. Still sexting a co-worker whom she claimed she was no longer in contact with. Having been busted sexting him previously. Also. I cleared out of there like a blackjack dealer. My wife was around less and less. Had to be free to live her life. Go out with her friends. More often than not she would call me to pick our daughter up from daycare. After promising to pick her up and have some girl time. Just tell her I'm working late or not feeling well. She always had something better to do and the kids were old enough to know better. I went to pick our daughter up one day. When they called her name she came running over until she saw it wasn't mom. Again. Slumped her shoulders and slowly walked over to ask what's her excuse this time. That was the breaking point. Told her to get out. Even helped pay her security deposit to get her out. When she said. You didn't pray hard enough and that's why our son has cancer. That's why I'm sleeping with my prayer partner. 
She required a much more varied selection of dice than I was able to provide. So she went out and acquired them herself while I was stationed overseas in the Air Force. We met and spent the first 7 years of our married life on the west coast, then moved east. 5 years later, I took a job back on the west coast, but it was the middle of the school year. So I went out ahead and lived on my own until everyone could join me. Things hadn't been very good between us for a while, but I hadn't articulated it to Hirosa or even Miss Alpha Subby and vague feelings of dissatisfaction. One weekend, out there on my own, I decided to take a day and drive to one of my favorite towns. A town in which I had lived long before I knew her. A town we had visited often while married. It was late afternoon was about to head back to my hotel when I realized that I could visit a particular beach that had special meaning to me from my earlier life there. I stopped at a convenience store, grabbed a grolsch like I used to drink on that beach, and drove out there. Hiked out to a specific spot I remembered. Sat down. Popped the beer. And looked out over the ocean. And it hit me that I hadn't done that in over 20 years. Whenever we'd visit the area, I'd suggest stopping at the beach. But she wasn't interested and would always veto the idea. I'm sure reading this it seems like the tiniest thing. But it was the catalyst for me realizing just how completely dissatisfied I was with our relationship. I think from the time I sat down, I knew it was over within maybe 10 minutes. Just sitting there, sipping my beer, looking at the ocean. Edit, RIP inbox, and my first gold. Thanks, Redditors. I seriously thought this would be one of those I'm late to the thread so no one will read it posts. Thank you for all the incredibly kind words. Grolsch is indeed a Dutch beer. It can be had in distinctive green bottles with hinged, resealable ceramic caps. I chose it because when I had lived in that place before, and had headed out to that specific beach with friends, I'd always bring Grolsch. When I found evidence of the last affair, as soon as I heard it, I knew that was the end, and there would never be anything else there. When my stepdaughter became a teenager, my ex ramped up the nutso. She had always been an impatient, angry screamer of a parent. But as my stepdaughter became a young woman, my ex just went crazy with envy or something. I know lots of moms have a hard time with teenage daughters. But their base level patience is so much better than my ex's was. Threats of cutting hair in middle of night while daughter slept. Pearling hair. Slapping face. Ridiculing in front of her friends. Swinging something that missed and put a hole in the wall. I was out. With the kids. When I found the letter between her and my friend about their affair and how she couldn't wait to be away from me so they could be together. Yup. I knew then. That it was time to get that divorce. Our daughter at 3 years old told us to stop yelling. I left for work at 6am and forgot to unplug the toaster. When I arrived home at 6pm, I was given the everything you've ever done to piss me off speech just for leaving the toaster plugged in. I asked her what she did all day that prevented her from unplugging it herself. Another I'm an asshole speech. I said something to the effect of quit acting like your ducking mother. She threw the cat at me. A cat. She threw a ducking cat at me. Edit words and such. Edit 2 Scuba Steve went on to live with me after the official separation and divorce. During the last year and a half of our marriage she became extremely psychologically abusive. She was a narcissist. Controlled my every move. Would isolate me. Refused physical contact. I was just an extension to her life. Was not allowed to talk to any female. Was not allowed to hang out with any friends or she would ignore me for up to 5 days at a time. Double standards everywhere. Verbal abuse and the list can continue but it hurts to think about. The last straw for me was when she threatened to kill me because I came home from work late even though she knew I would be home late. It was just a little too late for her and she also threatened to hit me the same day. This was the second time this happened and I talked with several people at work about it and they suggested that I run. I had texts of the threats on my phone and contacted a lawyer that same week. She agreed to sign since I told her I would take severe legal action if she didn't. Thankfully no children and it was a clean divorce and I'm happily divorced. For the first one, I was working late and the daycare calls and ask if I'm picking up my kids. Left work to go get them. When I got home she was gone. Didn't hear anything from her for two weeks. For the second one, 
The third time I bailed the house out of foreclosure because she wouldn't pay the bills. Even though there was money in the accounts to cover it. I closed the account. Handed her cash for the mortgage pack to bag my kids and left. There were many reasons but this was the final straw. My grandmother was on her deathbed. My ex took this time to throw a childish fit because I ordered food that she didn't like. I realized at that point how completely miserable I was and how ducking short life is. So we divorced. She took all my money and my kids, plus child support. I've still never been happier and every time I have to interact with her is blows my mind that we made it 9 years. I guess when we were together I was so trained to comply and overlook. I now see what an absolute toxic bully she is was. When I, as the only earner in the house, was denied buying a new pair of work boots in December because she needed the money to buy vaccines for the puppies. She bred dogs as a hobby. I was a framing carpenter in Ohio. My current work boots were toast holes in both. No soles. I needed them. Her puppy vaccine story was bullet her hobby was dogs. But she was a pro at popping pills. That's what she needed the money for. I was done with her by March. The day she didn't take off work to help me go through a dumpster. I had accidentally thrown my keys in the trash while cleaning out my car. Edit. Itch didn't even return my call. After reading the what moment did you know you would marry your wife thread. What a beautiful world full of love we live in. After reading this thread. Oh right. The things some people can do to the ones they are supposed to love. When I realized I didn't get along very well with her boyfriend. That would be the moment I walked in from work to find my wife sitting at the kitchen table crying and our two children, five and two at the time, nowhere to be found. I immediately thought something had happened to the kids. When I asked what was wrong, where are the kids? She said they are fine. They are upstairs playing. I just realized that when we die the kids and I are all going to be in heaven and you won't be there with us. Context. We were both raised in religious families but throughout college neither of us practiced at all. After college I began migrating toward my ultimate destination as an atheist. She found God and was reborn. When she falsely told our marriage counselor that I punched her. The next week. She denied saying it and accused our counselor of lying. He gave me a you should leave this relationship look. I took that look as permission from a professional that I definitely wasn't making the wrong decision. Got divorced and never looked back. I legitimately feared for my safety towards the end. Not that she would hurt me, but that she would make a false accusation to the cops or a crazy friend. Edit. Shortened the story. Not me, but one of my best friends. Got his permission to post. He got a pretty substantial year-end bonus from work. He decided to use most of it for his wife's Christmas gift and pay off her remaining student loans. Dollar sign 14,700, and the remaining portion to buy a new computer chair for when he gamed. Dollar sign 300. Christmas morning, he was nice enough to let me stay at his place when I traveled for work as he lived 20 minutes from the airport. We all woke up and had breakfast. His family and her parents came over and we started exchanging gifts. Besides paying off her loans. He had gotten her a few times items. She opened the card saying her loans were paid off she just sat there for a minute. After the silence. And assuming she was kinda in shock. She asked did you seriously not get me anything else? Bought you that stupid keyboard. The wrong one btw. And you only got me a few things? At that point. His brother in law and myself decided to go hang out in another room for a while they ended up getting into a huge fight. A day later when he was dropping me off at the airport he told me that he was going to visit a lawyer and get a divorce. She let me know she was pregnant and wanted my permission to tell all her girlfriends during a girl's night out. Since I knew there was no possible way it was my child. She was also unknowingly admitting to having an affair. I can't math. And she can't. It was with her boss. Lawyered up the next day. And he ate her alive in court. I got primary custody of our child we already had, and child support, and a sheriff's notice that she had to vacate my home in 30 days. I never knew she could be that stupid. I think I'm in the process of realizing it's time to call it a day. I love her but we seem to have vastly different ideas on the best way to live, i.e. money, lifestyles, and it's thoroughly disheartening being the one trying to make an effort all the time. It sucks. 
when my buddies approached me to complain that she kept sitting on their laps, wiggling, and hoping for an erection. The morning I saw a picture of some dudes D on her phone, she was classy enough to bring him to the divorce proceedings. Wasn't married but about one month away from marrying. We worked together at the same job for about a year but she was first shift and I was second. We both had weekends off so we could and did things on the weekend. We had got everything paid for and was set. One weekend. Actually on my birthday. I went to get a haircut before we went out for the night. I weirdly noticed this one car in the parking lot of our apartments. Didn't think too much as there was a red ton of cars that would come and go. She had gone up to a casino with her mom the previous night and stayed overnight. That wasn't uncommon as they were both huge gamblers. I got back and did some cleaning and she walked in. She looked at me and threw her ring on the table and said, We need to talk. I think I like Joe more now and decided I want to be with him. I don't need the ring and you can cancel the wedding. It all clicked that car I seen was Joe's. She didn't go up to the casino with her mom but with Joe instead. Even more ducked up as I called her mom to see how close they were to home and she covered for her daughter. I then come to find out her friend Joe was her ex-lover who also broke up her last engagement. He was always trying to befriend me too and act like we were best friends. I have never felt less of a man. More ashamed and hurt than when this happened. I sacrificed a lot for her. I was there doing anything and everything for her and her family when her dad very slowly passed away. And she ends up treating me like a pet she could get rid of when she got bored. I still can't remember a few months of time after that happened. I was in a bad place. Edit. I just realized I never finished this up. It took a while to get my head straight. My best friend of over 20 years. To me a brother and family. Helped me out so much. He made sure I was going to be okay and took me out to blow off steam. We took an awesome trip to some fun ass spots with a few other people. I owe him so much for the help. My family really helped too. I ended up meeting my fiance now about 6 months after I had that it happen. We have been together for over 5 years and we will be celebrating our first daughter's birthday on the 29th of June. Amazing what has happened since then. My one advice is don't ever give up or think you are worthless. You are worth everything to somebody out there no matter what. I can say I am almost embarrassed by how I reacted back then. Lol. Edit again. I never expected this to get this much attention. Thank you everybody for the kind words. And yes my ex and I were together for about 4 years. I will say after I met my new fiancé now. About a month into dating I got a new job and got to say good riddance to the last of my ex. One of the greatest things ever. The oddest thing to was my best friend who stuck with me actually had his dad pass away my last week at work. My last day. I had told them I needed to leave at 3pm to go help my best and his family with last minute wake and funeral stuff. They told I can't leave and they won't let me. After how my ex got everybody there to somehow feel really bad for her about leaving me and I got left with people telling me how they feel bad for her. I just dropped my it on the ground and left. I remember the supervisor saying you are going to get into lots of trouble and I looked at her dead in the eyes and go. What? Am I going to get fired? And just started laughing on my way out. When she asks me to take the kids on some errands. Has kept me celibate for months saying she is asexual now. And once I leave invites some guy over to tongue lash her for 45 minutes and then drop a load inside her in the bedroom without a condom. All on the day before father's day. Thanks Amy. Not divorced yet. This happened last week. Her life is in such shambles I am not even mad. I don't know why I thought these would be funny. This it is depressing as duck. After all the arguments. Yelling at each other and talking in cross purposes we were looking at each other and she says to me. I know that you are going to divorce me because of this but I really hate you. It was the first time in a long time that I completely understood her and what she was trying to express to me. My daughter was 3 at the time and over the years she said she wanted me back but I would say. All you have to do is apologize for what you said. She never would. That's how I knew she didn't love me. For my. Step. Dad. When he found her calculations about how much she would get in child support and alimony in a divorce. She wasn't home at the time. He had the locks changed on his doors first thing. Then shut her out of their shared accounts.